With the launch of the RX 590 and the pricing of these graphics cards, I'd say that it is time to compare it with the previous model, the RX 580. After all, these two graphics cards share plenty of features. Let's get down to the practical stuff. Both models use the same graphics chip, the same manufacturing process and feature the same memory capacity, among other things like transistor count or shader units or in some cases, the price. To maintain a fair test between the two cars, I am using the A-Stroke RX 580 and the A-Stroke RX 590. Why? Well, both have a similar cooling system, similar layout alongside the similar price. This means that we can truly see the improvement that has been made with the 590 over the 580, starting with some games. In the Witcher 3 Wheel Hunt at 1080p, we can see that the 590 has on average a gain of 9 frames per second. However, things get interesting when we go into the frame rate stability. The 9 frames per second difference is maintained throughout the whole benchmark period. In fact, both graphics cars have the same frame drops and spikes at almost the same time. This includes GTA 5 and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. No matter what, the RX 580 will lag behind the 590. All the games tested and graphs show the low 0.1% of the frames per second. This value gives us a better image of the frame rate spikes and drops over the course of the benchmark, or in this case, the gameplay. These 10 frames per second gains are due, of course, to the higher clock speeds that the RX 590 comes with from the factory. However, this increase in frequencies has a downside. The RX 590 will use more powers in games and when rendering. In fact, it will use 80 watts of more power on average to be exact. Basically, the RX 590 is a refresh of the RX 580, which is a refresh of the RX 480. Yes, small improvements have been made, which resulted in the gains showcased in this video. Of course, you could overclock the RX 590 even more, but you're not going to see a massive overclocking headroom because by default, these graphics cards are already pre-overclocked. In fact, the most overclocking I could get on the Ace Rock Phantom Gaming RX 590 was 8% in games. Of course, you most likely read the title of the video, so now we can do a comparison between the Ace Rock RX 580 and the Ace Rock RX 590. Both are Phantom Gaming cards, just so you know. In terms of the design of these cards, the main improvements done on the RX 590 are the adding of the backplate and the usage of a semi-passive profile for the two fans of the cooler. Also, the fan profiles have been tweaked to be less aggressive. The fan profiles themselves being one of the main complaints of the Phantom Gaming RX 580. Just like I mentioned in my review, another reason to acquire the Phantom Gaming RX 590 is the 3 game bundle offered by AMD. This includes Devil May Cry 5, The Division 2 and Resident Evil 2 for free. This adds more value to the overall package offered by not only AMD but also by Acerock. In the end, if you are planning to buy either the RX 580 or the RX 590, it all comes down to the price of each graphics cards. You could get the RX 580 and just overclock it more, or you could get the RX 590 and use it with the factory boost clocks. As always, it all comes down to the price and your own personal preference.